Good morning. Bonjour, buenos dias, guten morgen, buongiorno. And whom and as we say here in Finland. On behalf of the whole HELPER organization, I would like to um, joy, uh, welcome you all into our third virtual light and building webinar of the week. My name is Susanne Lehtinen and I'm heading the marketing here at HELPER as my day job, but today I'm your compere uh, in this session this morning. At this uh, event today, we have actually a really, really nice uh, webinar uh, for, uh, lined up for today, and it's around the active ahead. If you would have questions during the session today, you can uh, uh, put those on the question part, and we will have a questions and answer session in the end of the uh, webinar. Without spending much of an other time here, I'll want to introduce our director for the wireless business, uh, Matti Westerinen, and he will walk through the topic this morning. Welcome, Matti. Thank you, Susanne, and uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, really a pleasure to be here today, and don't steal my glass of water. I may need it. So, today's topic is Active Ahead, Helmar Truly Wireless Lighting Control Solution. Uh, I'm going to walk through what it is, what, it, what are the benefits, what kind of projects we've done so far, what have been in a way the key things on those projects. We are also now launching the generation two of Active Ahead and I'll walk you through that as well as we go through the presentation. And as Susanne mentioned, please post the questions throughout this session. So we'll take them at the end, uh, but in order for you to remember what you have in mind, you can write them and type them in immediately. All right, let's get started. So this works, good. We'll start with the challenges in renovation projects and why renovation? Well, of course, wireless is a perfect match for renovation projects. Of course, not just for renovation, but in renovation projects, there are additional benefits because the system is wireless. Meaning, of course, that you don't need to run extra cabling or in most likely cases you don't need to rewire anything as such but especially in projects like renovation projects what are the challenges that people typically face we've listed here a few of them and uh, one of them which is true of course for new buildings as well is that the buildings do change over their lifetime so what you now design today and how the space is used today may not be the way it's actually used in one or one or two years or even six months or so. So that calls for a system that actually adapts all the time continuously, not just that it runs today as it's been configured, but it can also adapt to the changes. The other challenge that we also, of course, face is that not just again in renovation, but also in other projects, is that some of the customers feel that the intelligent smart lighting control systems are somewhat complicated. So either it's that it's kind of complicated to, to reconfigure or set up, it requires a lot of things in the beginning and so forth and so forth. So that is something, of course, that uh, we need to tackle as such. And the third one, which is of course renovation specific in most likely cases, is that you don't want to have a long downtime for your space. If you are, a, let's say, building owner with an office, you want that kind of office space to be as efficiently used over time as possible. So if you renovate it, you want to have as short downtime as possible. In the best case, no downtime for your space at all, if you consider from the work workforce perspective or if you're renting your building as an office uh, space, then it's lost money if you have downtime for your kind of building or, or floor or space. Then how does Active Ahead then fit to this picture? So I'll start with what is Active Ahead, what makes it really unique? And that is, of course, the ones who know something about Active Ahead, they know that it's the artificial intelligence that we have running in the nodes, active head nodes, in, typically inside the luminaire, but also they can be outside. So it offers self-learning. And self-learning as such, of course, means that you get comfort as a space user. So you have light around you where you need it, when you need it, 
and so forth. But it also actually offers quite a few other benefits. Uh, and we go to those in the following slides. But just to kind of to let you know how it basically functions in the background is that we are running on top of a Bluetooth mesh network. And that is a standard for low energy uh, wireless communication, which is actually perfect for lighting, because in lighting, luminaires typically are between, say, two meters to 10 meters <clears throat> distance. And that calls for a low energy solution. Uh, we have eyes in our luminaires or in our nodes. And that eyes is, of course, in, in our case, a sensor, a multi-sensor, which has typically a PIR for movement detection, as well as then a light sensor for daylight harvesting, constant light output. So combining these eyes with the ears, which is the radio, we can actually enable self-learning. So whenever, if I'm an active head node, I tell my neighbors what I see, see and hear. And you do the same for me, and that enables us to actually learn from each other, meaning we can learn how the space is used. And not just today, but also tomorrow, continuously and never stopping to do that. Well-being, one of the key points for in Helvar kind of uh, vision and our, let's say, what we stand for is well-being. And uh, Active Ahead has said self-learning brings that, in certain extent, that self kind of uh, comfort and well-being for the space users, as said. So as the system adapts continuously, say you remove a wall or you build a wall in your open plan area, for example, the system automatically adapts and gives you then more light if you take off the wall or actually then offers you the right lighting in the room that you have then kind of created. We also offer users personal lighting. In our case, it's called the Active Tune. It comes in a mobile application typically, but also we have other things coming up, other interfaces for that in the pipeline as such. But that gives the space user, let's say an office space user, an easy way with their mobile app to tune the light above their desk. And that is something the specifiers, for example, seems to love. And not just the specifiers, because it offers also uh, benefits for the building owners as well. Not just as a happy tenant or happy space users, meaning they most likely will stay there for a longer time, but also you get points for BRIAM, well standardization and so forth and so forth. So if you care for your building and want to have actually some certificate for your building to show that it actually is what, what you say it is, then these can be the interesting things that offer you extra extra kind of benefits and points for that. Energy saving, of course, especially in renovation projects, comes up often. There needs to be a return on investment for the building owner. So why would you invest in a new lighting if you already have something that works? Uh, let me go through a real life example where we've actually measured the energy consumption in a parking garage installation in this case. Uh, the parking garage had a fluorescent lighting uh, before the renovation. So in the renovation, the fluorescent lamps were actually one-to-one -one swapped to active ahead luminaires with sensors inbuilt in the luminaires. It was time block based so that during the office hours, typical office hours, it was all on and then outside of office hours it was all off in in practice so if you came to the garage in the weekend or after 6 p.m you the only light you had was your car's kind of beams whereas at the moment what is offered is that you have the right lighting at the right time in the right space there is a light configuration in that space but roughly let's say 10 to 20 percent of the luminaires have been configured. So that is perfect because it had, has also saved time in the installation. And this very installation actually was done in a way where no downtime was kind of there for the actual parking garage. Of course, a certain circuit was down at the time and they swapped the luminaires in that circuit at the time. 
But the energy consumption, we measured before the project uh, what it could be and the, what kind of the potential payback time for the building owner. And what we then actually measured after the installation was even greater savings for the building owner. So a huge 85% energy saving compared to the fluorescent in the time block based, uh, schedule based solution. So that's, of course, a huge number as such. But also, if you compare to the LEDs, uh, so without active ahead, the same luminance we have there, uh, but with the same time block based system that the parking garage had, we actually save still 70%, which is a huge number. So, of course, this is the kind of, uh, I would almost say that as high as you can get, because in parking garage, there is traffic almost all the time. But in this parking garage, for example, it's a big open area. So if you run your kind of drive your car to one corner and you walk to the stairs or to the elevator, then you don't actually need to light up the whole space. You just need to light up that pathway to your car and to the exit. So you need still a bit of lighting there to see the whole space for security reasons. And that's what we've also done with the grouping and the corridor holes. But as it's wireless, we don't need to lead up everything. We can lead up a bit lights here and there to kind of save the energy, but at the same time to give you the comfort. In a typical office case, uh, it would be slightly lower, of course, the numbers, but we could claim that it's still significant as such, because you still have spaces which are not used and kind of optimizing, to, because typically if you run with the schedule as an example, then you need to a bit extend it to kind of long as such. But with Active Ahead, we have a lot of sensors, we know where the people are, so we can have the right lighting, right amount of lighting in the right space, and less lighting kind of elsewhere. But of course, you can still configure it as you like, and you can basically tune between the comfort and the energy saving depending on your customer needs. Moving on, so setup, installation and setup, that's of course, as I said, a key thing in renovation projects especially. Wireless lighting solution, of course, offers you the fact that you can take down a luminaire, put a new one in. What ActiveHead offers on top of that is a certain extent of out-of-the-box functionality, meaning when you have sensors in your luminaires, kind of after the first power up of the luminaire, of course they go on when they see movement. But as they learn, they also offer you kind of that light around you in the kind of a nearby space as such. So that means that you don't need to configure them on day one necessarily. So in typical case in kind of lighting control projects, you have a specification against which you then kind of install things against which you actually also commission the system. But that is typically something that may not reflect the actual usage of the space or even actually the actual installation of the system. So we hear quite often that when a person goes then to commission a system, they see that actually, hey, this was not exactly installed as it was in the specification. So then they are kind of puzzled that should they actually do it against the specification or should they actually try to think what the actual usage would be. Well, then comes in the tenant and uh, they may go with the kind of space, kind of uh, layout and floor plan that has been designed. But they may also feel that actually we need to move a bit these desks and, and this is not actually the right way that even though a year ago or two years ago, we thought that this is the way we would work here. Now that I see this space and now that we've moved into the space, I actually think that we should have this done a bit differently and so they change a bit the layout of the space and that may feel kind of a mean that again you need to reconfigure the space. With Active Ahead it kind of self-learns a certain amount of these changes in the layout so you don't necessarily need to do anything and actually you, what we promote is that you should let the system learn. Of course there's maybe certain areas which you need to configure say a meeting room where you have a wall panel you do need to configure the wall pan panel on day one as such but if it's an open plan area and so forth or corridor you may not not need to actually do anything in the day one 
And again, you can do configuration, but the extent of the configuration may be lower with Active Ahead. Or, for example, if you have an open plan which need to be lit up all the time, you may use lower light levels at the kind of uh, on group level, on the at space level, while the self-learning gives you anyway the right lighting, higher light level here where I'm sitting, if I'm alone in that space. So I still see that there is light at, at the end of the open plan area, but if the luminaires are on 20% or 30%, I couldn't tell a difference as such. I wouldn't know if they are on 85 or 25. So you can, again, save a huge amount of energy all the time. Uh, then where you can actually use this solution then, of course, it's not a perfect fit for all the spaces you may have. So typical uh, good spaces where we see Activa has had offered great benefits and where we see that it's fit is, of course, office, garage, uh, some other industrial spaces like warehouses, and in an office environment, stairways, corridors, the typical, let's say, office floors that you may have. But you still kind of may have some special areas where you really need a lot of logic, say your lobby areas or, or whatever that kind of space is. Helvar as such, we have a solution for that. And that's, of course, our DALI router solution, which is then perfect for the spaces where you actually need to go a bit beyond the basics or the typical ways of uh, that lighting offers you. Uh, let me run through a couple of reference cases, and these are now publicly available. You can, for example, go to YouTube to find the videos of these uh, couple of cases we show here. The first one being YIT, a big construction company in Finland, operating also outside of Finland. But they renovated their office, uh, their headquarters, and they've done that now in two phases so far. For the first building, they chose Active Ahead uh, for the reason that they wanted to have a flexible lighting control system that is still kind of state of the art in many ways. But the flexibility and, and the ease of installation was, of course, one of the key things there. And so they did configure Active Ahead and install Active Ahead for the uh, renovation of the first building they have. And that was more like a full renovation. So they created a lot of open plan areas and removed walls painted everything, kind of brought in new furniture. But there's a bridge to the other side of the second building, which was already, already renovated, uh, not lighting, but the rest of the space was renovated some time before already. But those people who were sitting in that side of the building or that building, when they saw the good lighting that this newly renovated office space had, they started to ask for the, could we have the same kind of lighting on our side as well? And uh, they then actually decided that they would renovate the lighting there as well, and only lighting. So in this case, they took off the old luminaires, put new kind of luminaires back to the same spaces. So it was a refurbishment renovation in that sense. But on that side, they actually, uh, we interviewed the lady in the, in the kind of uh, video panel here. So regarding the, benefits and what did they actually learn from this and, and how do the space users feel about it. And then one question we asked was that how did you actually then do the renovation because the office was not down as the first building building was. So they just kind of uh, closed, did it circuit by circuit as of such. And she said that they had actually this kind of flexi spaces for the people who whose space was and who, whose room was under renovation. But they then said that actually very few came because the renovation was so fast that they went for a coffee or for a lunch and when they came back they had new lighting and as it was active ahead in the rooms they have there they didn't actually do anything so it's purely self-learning in those rooms on corridor they've done a bit of grouping on the corridor and have a kind of low light level to keep the corridor and offer you the kind of uh, safety feeling that you see all the way through the end of the corridor but on the rooms People went out, they came in, wondered, oh shit, this is great. So that was a fantastic, uh, let's say, feedback uh, on that project. The second re reference case uh, presenting here is Rumble headquarters, a scan big Scandinavian company operating also a bit outside Scandinavia. They have a new building, uh, which is actually hybrid in the sense that 
on the ground floor, these lobby area restaurants, outdoor lighting console is done with Helva router system, whereas then the office floors you see here in the pictures, they actually have been done purely with Active Ahead. There are 3,000 Active Ahead nodes, so Active Ahead luminaires in that building, uh, and that includes a parking garage. So they kind of have three blocks. One of the blocks is parking garage, and then three office blocks, which are then connected, like in the modern world, you have so-called bridges to bridge these three blocks together and then a huge open area in the in the center but for them as well it was the kind of uh, adaptability the future proofness of the solution that why they chose active ahead and they were also interested in the occupancy data so from that building they are getting the occupancy data they have their own cloud-based bms system to which they take the occupancy data to see actually how their space is being used and how they could actually utilize that then for their customers as well when they design buildings. But in this one, it's actually interesting because they have very little configuration in the whole space. So 3000 nodes, everything in one network. So, and there is yes, that kind of gateways, but they are for the data collection only. So the Active Ahead operates there kind of just with the nodes and their processing power and uh, self-learning. Meeting rooms have wall panels, but then your kind of general areas, they have self-learning how they operate. And the customer seems to be extremely happy with the, with the solution as such. Then what is there in the generation two? So yes, we are launching now generation two, will be available in third quarter this year. It, of course, builds a lot on top of the, the current generation and uh, kind of surprised. We've been actually surprised how well the self-learning has fit the purpose that it was designed to kind of uh, uh, fit. So in, in that sense, the easy installation, the benefits I just kind of uh, went through with you. So in the generation two, we are renewing the hardware. So there is a lot easier installability for, for example, the DALI node as such. Maybe, Susanne has a, yeah, has a um, question or comment. I have a comment. So if you want to see the products a little bit nearer, you might want to adjust your video camera view in your webinar uh, webinar view. So just as a point so that you see them better. Exactly. So yeah. Susanne is also our IT support here in the meeting. <laughs> so uh, for Dali Luminaires outside the kind of, uh, if you are outside the Luminaire and want to have a node where you connect then Dali Luminaires, we have now uh, reused the loop mechanics kind of uh, ideology from the driver side for really easy installability, looping the mains power, taking from the other side DALI with mains out and so forth. So uh, really interesting piece and uh, we do a bit of DALI addressing on the other side as well. Then we have the small unit that sits inside the luminaires typically, so active ahead node which is then now having an improved processor and uh, radio and the connectors and so forth. So a powerful beast as such. And then of course your other components. New features. So as we have more processing power in the nodes, we can also now build more features. There has been of course a lot of feedback from what is maybe missing or what could be improved in the current generation. And all of that feedback, of course, is taken into account. And in the first release, a part of those are included already. And as we can now then uh, upgrade them, we will add then more features as we go along. But you will have options to a bit tune also the self-learning as an example and do more with daylight harvesting and, and that kind of thing. So really interesting things coming up with the kind of uh, software side as well. And finally, the cloud connectivity. Well, as I've kind of already told, for example, the Rumble building is connected to our cloud, help our cloud solution. But now with the generation two, we are actually more officially launching that for the kind of all our customers as such. And there is also then kind of more capabilities that are built into the nodes that we have in generation two to kind of uh, offer you and in going forward, offer you even more possibilities through our cloud solution. Um, Active Ahead as such is rather flexible, as I showed you, you can use DALI Luminaires, but the basic ideology, you choose your node 
and then according to that you choose your driver whether it's then the freedom drivers active ahead supports in the generation two or whether it's the dali drivers it's your choice kind of depending on the needs of the space and it's again you can have a combination of of those two so in we see in quite a few projects that you have let's say typically most of the thing luminaires with inbuilt active ahead because that's when you have most of the benefits also for installability and self-learning in, in a large extent but then you have downlights and such where it doesn't kind of make really sense to fit in the sensor as an example so then they can be dali and you can connect few luminaires with one kind of to one node to cover an area and so forth and so forth so it's flexible in in how you do it and uh, as we have the DALI node, we can also then use like DALI relays and so to actually communicate uh, outside of the, let's say, traditional drivers or luminaires. Then wrapping a bit up before the questions and answers. So Active Ahead in really short manner, it's a truly intelligent wireless lighting control solution. The installability is, is really, really great. So as it's wireless, you don't need to have control wiring there but also the self-learning gives you those benefits at the time of the setup and commissioning that uh, you can do it quicker and uh, better as such then if you need to do something we have a mobile app and we are renewing actually that as well for the second generation to do it even kind of offering even faster and simpler kind of commissioning or configuration as you need that then Unique self-learning, I said, that brings multiple different benefits, which we went through today, not just the uh, out-of-the-box functionality, but the adaptability throughout the lifetime of your installation. So we typically think that we do a project and that's it. We are happy at the, at the end of it, but actually the building owner and the tenant, the space users, they will live in that setup for from five to ten years typically in an office space as an example in certain other spaces even longer so that's where you get benefits it adapts kind of automatically to certain of the changes that may happen in the space and are very likely to happen as well and the cloud services with a lot of sensors in the building there are a lot of eyes that you can then use to actually create uh, analytics insights to the data that we can get from outside from the system and as it's bluetooth based of course it's rather well kind of equipped to carry on data in the system so the granularity of the data is rather high when it comes to kind of a bluetooth based active head solution as such but that's it now i'd like to invite Susanne back because she's been collecting your questions and I assume she will now pose some tricky ones to me. I'll try my <laughs> very best of course you know thank you Matti I think we Welcome. got a really nice uh, overview of things. We have got quite a few questions here so thank you very much. Please if you have any further questions just still uh, get them in but let's start with um, the first one on what kind of projects has been implemented using the Active Ahead. So, so far, well, the two references, for example, here were office, uh, mainly office areas, but we've done actually quite a few parking garages on, when I say we, it's our <laughs> partners as such mainly, but I'd say that the major, biggest majority maybe is offices, then comes parking garages and a bit of education actually, so schools, universities and that kind of things. We see that there is a lot interest in warehouses in also the high bay because now with the DALI unit you can also utilize our system sensors so that's I've seen that there are multiple specifications now out there not sure if actually we've installed how many so far but I see that there is a lot of kind of a pull on that side to do more and I I and actually the customers they think that that's a perfect solution for such a space so Makes sense. Um, then there is a question around uh, can and if so does the AA communicate with other Bluetooth systems? Uh, to some extent we already do that so the panel wireless control panel we support this Bluetooth based uh, uh, of course your mobile phone with active tune in it that's Bluetooth based. We've done some other pilots as well uh, 
which are typically then integrating to Bluetooth devices. Let's say interesting areas would be air quality and such things where you actually then can do kind of uh, carry on the data, potentially do some actions locally if necessary, but in some cases it's not necessary. You just want the data out from the system and then you actually mesh them together in the cloud, for example, and offer again insights out with the, which is more valuable than the tiny piece of data itself. Makes perfect sense. Quite a lot of questions around what kind of luminous, luminous active ahead solutions work with and I kind of combine a little bit now here from the online on whether it works with the DALI drivers because it's mm, kind of a similar yeah. thing so maybe you could reflect. Uh, yes that. so so of course there are the so-called active ahead luminaires which then are such that you just plug in the mains to it and it works as an active ahead node. Typically in those luminaires they use the small node and uh, so this active ahead uh, node uh, which is in the current generation called control unit and in the new one we call it a node but in a way the same thing as such. So that's what you typically use then inside the luminaires and there are quite a number of luminaire manufacturers already on board and we are kind of uh, getting more interest all the time to, to kind of add more. Uh, then if you have DALI luminaires as said so this is then the, the box that you would use uh, to connect DALI so you this one takes main so this uh, specific product would sit typically outside the luminaire it has an inbuilt power supply unit for the DALI side so you can connect DALI luminaires in here you can also actually use the DALI system sensors we offer uh, in that one as such so this is the one we are also building, adding more, let's say, to the portfolio. But these are the things that come out now in third quarter this year. And then, well, stay tuned for more when we <laughs> more announcement than later uh, later this year. Um, then maybe I have a, quite a few questions here actually lined up, so I need to a little bit select here now. Uh, are you able to tune the color temperature with the active head? Uh, yes. So in Let's say the current generation, there is already possibilities with the active tune as such, but now in the second generation, we are adding more. So with the CUDA uh, or this DALI node, we can also then connect to tunable white luminaires and, uh, for example, have seen control with the wireless control panel uh, to tune the, the kind of uh, light uh, in the room and the light color as such. Uh, are there further questions we have? Uh, do you need some kind of central unit to manage the whole system? Excellent question. So that is actually one of the unique selling points. Just good that it came up a question, so <laughs> because then you re remember it better. So I said in the Rumble, for example, you saw 3,000 nodes all in one network, no central gateway or controller or such to control those nodes as such. They operate on their own as such. So if I'm this one, I have the brain power in here to kind of consider what should I do now. Of course, if you press a wall panel button, I will kind of uh, obey your, <laughs> your request as such. But the beauty here is that it is actually truly in one network. It scales and that's where actually we, what we've seen is that the bigger the project, actually the more benefits you get from the active head solution. So the scalability is, is really unique, I would claim, in, in this system. As we said, uh, as I said, maybe <laughs> the right way, we are now introducing the controller for Active Ahead, and in the future there will be then uh, also control aspects on that one, how you then can benefit from that central and remote access to the system. So uh, those will be there as well, but in general, what I here presented operates kind of uh, without any central system. Good, good. Um... Well, then there is a question around the holidays and what happens if the space is not used. So yeah, yeah, what people should then? have holidays. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm in favor of the holidays uh, for not too long, but certain amount of them. Yeah. Uh, so yes, the node has, of course, a memory, and everything I learn will be kept in my memory. So if you go out and, for example, close just the building for one month, when you come back the next following day then it continues from where it left a month ago. The same thing if you just kind of pluck off the power from it, the same thing, it will remember what it had learned. But we still, we don't typically recommend you to have 
traditional on-off switches because that's then I'm continuously learning and if you all the time unplug my power then that of course disturbs my learning because I need to before I really learn I need to have some kind of uh, data that I'm all the time collecting and if you all kind of all the time unplug the power then I lose that small bit of data and then I need to kind of always start the relearning from from again Good, good. Let's just see. If we have uh, actually quite a few questions here today, which is excellent. Um, the more the so more. Some customers asked to have an app to control the light. Will it be possible? Yes. So the Active Tune now in the second generation, it is something kind of available to configure with the Activate Mobile app as such. So in the current generation, that would mean that someone from Helvar or our partner actually comes in and configures, pairs the Luminar with the Active Tune kind of sticker and the code there. But now in the second generation, that will be more easier. So then the space user can have that control over their Luminar if needed and wanted. So we've deliberately divided this into two apps. So the one that is the actual user of the space has, because they don't, they shouldn't care about lighting or let's say timeouts and whatnot. So they should have a simple UI to tune the light, and that's what we offer to them. Then you have the configuration part, which is done typically by, let's say, some kind of expert. Of course, we try to do that as simply as possible, so that, let's say, facility managers can have access and modify the, the light settings based on the feedback that they get from the space users. But they are two separate apps, both on mobile, though. Excellent. Uh, still a few questions I think we could take, uh, allow to take today. Uh, maybe a little bit, or, uh, there is a question around uh, why this doesn't seem to be an, like a good solution for everything. That's what it says. Are there spaces where you would not recommend to use the wireless solution? Uh, there are some, yes. So, and Helvar, of course, is a really excellent position to offer kind of a hybrid solution for your spaces. So, Active Ahead, like I said, and Rumble is a good example of that, I would say, as a project. It fits very well for the parking garage, for the office floors. But then you have that lobby area, somewhere you have a lot of logic or schedules to run certain things, and if something happens, then that and so forth. That's where our router solution is really perfect fit for, or if it's the outdoor lighting control, whatnot. So there are certain things that I wouldn't use personally if I have the choice of adding there the perfect fit, I wouldn't then the good fit, which maybe Active Ahead, for example, would be. I would kind of use Active Ahead where it really gives the benefits. And that is, for example, the typical office areas, garages, warehouses, industrial, and those kind of applications. Of course, we've done a lot of buildings with just Active Ahead, so don't get me wrong. It doesn't always need to be hybrid. But there are certain cases where hybrid really makes sense. And with the hybrid, you mean? I mean wired and wireless. So wired in the case of Helvar is kind of router solution, imagined routers, and then active ahead as the wireless solution. Okay, let's see if we would still have a couple of additional questions. Um, there is a quite a lot of kind of like a technical questions on how to do something, but maybe what you could, uh, there is like how to create a Group, uh, groups or how to join the luminaries to the bus uh, kind of yeah, yeah. to, the, to so, the panels and so forth so maybe yes, you could elaborate if I a little bit elaborate shortly and then please yeah. be in contact with your helper representatives that uh, will arrange you then sessions to go more thoroughly through what is actually active ahead and how do you really do it because the let's say the most powerful thing is to see it live as well and a bit play it with yourself because that's when you really get the wow effect that oh shit this is actually true what they said but in brief, mobile app is what we use to configure, be it grouping or be it wall panel, be it now in the second generation to configure active to, you use a mobile app to do it. And uh, then if it is something else, as I said, you have the relay options to connect locally, let's say to HVAC or alarm system. So you can do those kind of things with, uh, with these ones as well. There you typically, as I said, you need a bit of maybe training and understanding how to use these properly as such, but that's it's still rather simple as such. But mobile app is the, let's say, the quick answer. Very good. 
I think we have covered most of the questions. And if you would have any further questions, please be in touch with your local help our sales. And I'm sure that they re they'll be happy to uh, tell you more. And I'm sure we can also organize some trainings later on. I want to thank Matti uh, very much for his uh, uh, presentation and uh, the opportunity uh, and uh, answering to our tricky questions today. Uh, then I would also like to take the opportunity to thank you all for participating today. And remember, we have a two really cool webinars to come up for the latter part of the week. There is a um, webinar on the Freedom Luminaire Component concept coming up tomorrow, at uh, the same time as today. And then we have a DALI 2 webinar coming up on Friday. So warm welcome to those as well. As of this session today, I want to wish you an excellent day. and. Uh, we hopefully see you online soon again. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.